Hello friends, welcome back. In this session, we will understand what transfer learning is all about. This session is going to be a quick session, maybe less than 10 minutes is what I need, I believe. And this is going to give you a lot of examples to make you understand with ease what is transfer learning. Shall we get into it right away? You and I are already familiar with it. We have been using transfer learning day in and day out. How sir? Are you sure? Yes, I am very sure. It is very simple. When we use our knowledge, which we have gained through doing something, to do something else is called transfer learning. That's it. I know doing something. I learned something out of it. And if I use whatever I have learned towards doing something in anything else in future, I can call it transfer learning. Very simple. You have got two tasks. Task A, task B. You have done the task A. And if you can use all the talent or part of it to do the task B also, which you have used in task A, I can call it transfer learning. That's it. It's very simple. An example will make this much more easier. You know driving cycle. Some of the features of driving cycle can be extracted and it can be used towards learning driving a bike. Right? It's a very simple example and this is called transfer learning. If you know riding cycle, the knowledge can be used for bike driving. Now, if you know mathematics, it becomes easier for you to learn machine learning and deep learning. That knowledge that you have with mathematics can be transferred to learn machine learning and deep learning. One more example, which is going to be very exciting as well. You know playing cricket, so I can transfer, I can move some of the features, some of the things that I have used towards playing cricket to learn baseball, to play baseball. It's a simple thing. If you know cricket, you can learn baseball easily. Now, you have understood what the fundamental is. I am going to take the cricket and the baseball example again. I am going to explain it further a little bit with some more examples. Right. In the cricket and baseball, you have a lot of similarities. For example, in cricket, you need to hold the bat. Bat positions are there. You are using ball in both the things. You are hitting it and shots are almost the same. You are running. You should be an athlete. All these things that are available in cricket are also used in baseball in a slightly modified manner. So, if you know playing cricket, some of the features, some of the knowledge that you have towards playing cricket can be moved to playing for playing the baseball with some mild alterations or some mild inputs. That's it. This is very simple. I am going to use what I have already in another thing to make it better and easier. Right. How a machine learning or a deep learning model works? That's very simple. Machine learning or a deep learning model is always developed for some specific task. I mean, I can detect if it is a cat or a dog. I can understand something. I can predict something. This is what, but it is all specific. It is kind of isolated. So when there are changes or alterations required, this models won't be working fine. For example, you have developed a model to find if it is a cat or dog. And if you want to determine donkey or tiger, it may not work fine. So you might have developed a real fantastic model to determine if it is a cat or dog. The model could be 100% accurate, could be really faster. But if you want to do a different task with the same kind of model, which are kind of closely related, it might fail. So this is the real motivation for transfer learning. Well, I'm doing task A, I need to do task B. Both have a lot of resemblance. So why cannot I capitalize, I use the features, the advantages that I have in feature A, in task A to task B. Why cannot I move something from left to right where I can add anything more to right to make it really better? That's exactly what is transfer learning. We need to go a little deeper. I'm going to take one simple example and that example will help you better. It is traditional machine learning that we are always talking about and we have done a lot of sessions there. Traditional machine learning is about some explicit task, some explicit data set and we have developed a model there. And that model will not retain any knowledge and will not transfer any knowledge to anybody or to any other model. For example, I am developing a model to find if it is a cat or dog and I have got a nice results. I am not going to transfer that knowledge to anything else. So here in the traditional ML approach, it is almost like I learn, I keep it myself and it is a very selfish approach. But when you come to transfer learning, all what we have learned can be transferred. For example, I have got the features and weights which can be transferred from model A to model B, from setup A to setup B, where setup B could really add something more, it could improvise it and it can be really useful. And this is what is transfer learning. When I keep it myself, when I keep it within myself, I call it traditional machine learning. I do not have to transfer anything. 
I am not going to use it with other models. But when I try to transfer something to somebody else where they can add something more to it and they can make it really useful, that's called the transfer learning, right? I'm going to give you a simple representation with the same cricket and the baseball example. I have got model A and this is the task A that I'm talking about, playing cricket. So what are all the things that we do here? Holding bat, the swing position is important. The running between the wickets is important. The bowling, the catching, the fielding, the wicket keeping. All these are the tasks, all these are the content that are related to task A, which is nothing but playing cricket. Now, this is specific and this is a separate model. Now, I have another model B where it is nothing but playing baseball. What are all the contents there? Holding bat, swing position, running between the wickets, bowling, catching, fielding, even wicket keeping is there in baseball and this is separate. Now, you see, there are a lot of resemblance between these two, but the traditional ML approach will not be using whatever you have developed for model A with model B. There is no connection at all. Now, what do we propose? We propose a new thing where we have model A and we transfer learning. We use transfer learning to transfer all the common properties to model B where I can learn things much more easier. But you need to remember this. I can add some game specific learning content as well. I can add some more features as well in model B. It is not exactly copy pasting whatever I have in model A to model B. Instead, I can also add, insert something new into it so that the model B can perform better. Instead of you learning something from scratch, instead of model B learning anything from scratch, it is now much more easier using the transfer learning to learn something already and then to add something more over it. It is like I give you a platform, you add something more to it. If you do not have a platform, you may have to first lay the platform and then start working on it, which would be really troublesome for you. So the transfer learning makes the job easier. Now, I'm going to give you one technical example, which, which can make your understanding a little better. I've got two tasks, L1 and L2. L1's task is to identify the objects in the computer science lab. The computer science lab will have chair, table, computer, keyboard, router, monitor, clock, and other equipment there in the lab. Now, my task is to identify objects in the computer science lab. And I have given a data set, you have trained, and the model is all available with you. L2 is another task where I need to identify the objects in an office environment where I have got the same set of computers, tables, chair, but with a little modification in the setup, little modification in the environment, I'll have it. Now, can I use the model that I have developed for task L1 with L2? No, we cannot use it. It might not really get you the real good result. So, we need transfer learning here in this kind of approaches where I can retain most of the content from L1 to L2 with ease. This is what transfer learning is all about. The fundamental idea is to reuse. That's it. So, it's very simple and easy. Now, there are three things that we need to remember. Whenever you do a task, ask yourself some questions. That's going to be extremely easy and that's going to be applicable for this as well. First question, what? What to transfer? What are all the common features that you have between these two? What are all the common things that I have between task A and task B? They can be transferred. Irrelevant things cannot be transferred or need not be transferred. Second, when to transfer? This is most important. When you transfer, it should improve the performance and it should not degrade the performance. So you need to know when are you transferring? And this is a very important aspect for transfer learning. How to transfer? We have many algorithms for it. And I'm going to give you some examples in near future on this. These three questions are important when you go with transfer learning. What, when, and how? That's it. In this session, I introduced you what transfer learning is all about. And I gave you some good examples, I believe. If you have any questions, suggestions, please go ahead and comment it in the comment sections. I'll be able to answer you. If you like the channel, please subscribe. Thank you.